What is up everybody and welcome to Actionable Analytics. My name is Professor Yates. I'm a professor of data analysis as well as visualization. So in today's video, I'm just gonna be showcasing how you can go out and build something referred to as a racing bar graph. So you might have seen this across various YouTube channels, definitely kind of like a popular trend to be able to do this, but it's actually a ton of fun to be able to build one. So we're gonna be doing that in today's video. If you enjoy this content, find it helpful, find it entertaining, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I'm actually trying to hit 100,000 subscribers. But anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the video. For this video, we're gonna be leveraging a website called Flourish. So Flourish has a wide variety of options for you to choose from in terms of visualization. They are definitely aesthetically pleasing. Now they may not be the most functional in terms of developing a dashboard with something like Power BI or Tableau, but it's, it's really exploratory, a lot of great visualization. So if you ever get some time, I would encourage you to explore some of these. In this particular video, we're gonna be focusing on making our own uh, bar chart race or racing bar chart and doing that. So you'll see here that we have urban population uh, by country. And so if you wanted to, you could actually download the data directly from Flourish. And we'll talk about that because something interesting going on with this is whenever we build a racing bar chart, we use something called wide data, which is basically gonna go across uh, time. Now, for most people, we're not used to seeing data stored this way. Instead, it's mostly in a long format. So we can see that we've got Afghanistan here as an example, and then you'll notice that it just goes down on a, a per year basis. So at the end of the video, I'll be doing a little bit of a bonus showcasing a very fast way to convert data from long into wide format because that's how the racing bar chart ends up taking the data. It needs to be in a wide format in order to race across time because it'll just go across the, the columns like that. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started on this. So if you click on make your own, you'll end up getting a, a couple of options here to just kind of pick from. So I am just going with the regular bar chart racing option. So I actually think this one looks pretty good because it adds like the picture, for example, for each of the flags at the end of the bar. I do like that. The color palette is pretty nice upon default. So we'll have a visualization component of this as well as the uh, data itself. So a couple things to note is we have this information here, which represents all of the countries. And so that's gonna be sort of like the thing we group based on. We also have a color key down here, which is gonna be region, and it gets broken down into five different regions in this case. So we can see that Americas is not North America and South America, for example. So uh, that's being used currently to do grouping. So we can see here that we've got like US, Brazil, Mexico being put in as yellow for the Americas. And so we can actually change those colors if we want to. So there's a whole host of things that you can do just kind of like working through here. So if you wanted to, you can see that the color is on a per category basis. The categories are the regions. So we could switch this over to something else. So this would be kind of like a lighter color option. Maybe something like that, but you can see how uh, it's just gonna relate based on that. And so of course we're not seeing anything in uh, Oceania or Africa for this specific chart, but the more we end up seeing in here, we would get some diversity in terms of the color for that. Okay, so beyond that, let's talk a little bit about the data structure itself. So this is based on uh, the Flourish website, but the, the highest level way to talk about this is there's really five components in total. There's in this case, column A, B, C, and then the D block. So we have a little bit of a key over here, which we can leverage. So A refers to as the label that you want to put on the actual graph itself on the um, left axis. So that's gonna be the name of the country in this case. In terms of the category, that's next, and that's gonna be the region. So this is something that we can leverage based off of the color like we were uh, messing with previously. For the third one, we have image. So we can actually point to an image via a link and it will return it. So we'll actually take a look at that. And then for the values, values ends up getting determined uh, just based on the year that we're doing. 
So we can see here that we're going from 1960 and then we're continuing to go off to the right. And so if we were to just briefly take a look through it, this one at this time goes up to 2017, I believe. And so that represents our, where our values are. And beyond that, these values just represent whatever we're trying to graph for each of the groups. So in this case, we're doing it on like a per country basis. And then these values would end up potentially going up or down over time. What's nice about this website also is we get a little bit of a preview down here. So we can quickly relate this data over to that pretty easily. So we can see we've got country name, we have region, and we can see that they have the, the color codes back to our, um, I guess, kind of like a, a dictionary or a legend. And then we can see that we have an image URL. So if we go ahead and copy one of those images and then pull it up over here, we can see that it will link to an SVG copy of each of the countries. So you'll see here that although this image is in a square upon default, what it does in the racing bar chart is it converts it into a circle and it'll just be the flag. So it'll just auto fit that for you, which is super nice. If you uh, wanted to put up your own image for that, then I'll, I'll show you how to do it via captions. So captions is the final piece of information that is not listed here. So what a caption is, and I think it's easier to say that it's just an event. So whenever you're going across your graph, you basically want something to pop up. So the first one is, well, when do you want it to start popping up? So let's just do 1967, and we're gonna go until 1971, which basically means it's gonna show up for five years, giving the users plenty of time to be able to read it. And then in the caption, we're just gonna say something about the 60s are ending, something like that. And then we could also put an image in here if, uh, if we wanted to, to do that. So we could put in a, a link here. So I already have a flag one and I'm just going to do that. So I'm just going to do copy image link, but you can link this to whatever you can find on the internet and then just do it like that. So we have this here. And then what we're going to do now is go over to preview and see the sixties are ending and randomly a U.S. flag uh, to, to kind of do that. But you can basically list off a whole host of what they call captions. I kind of view them as events that you can label up here and then just kind of do that um, as you see fit. Now, the longer your timeline is or the more units it has, this would make sense. Uh, for me personally, I think something that would make sense is whenever you have like a, a very prominent takeover, you could go ahead and call that out. So if you're interested in including it in your visualization, you can do all of those things as opposed to doing something like this in an editing software. So this basically represents the data aspect to it. And then in terms of the preview, there are so many options. So uh, the next thing that we're gonna do and kind of move into is gonna be taking a look at how to convert data from long to wide to be able to upload it to do your racing bar graph as quickly as possible in Excel. So I wanted to make sure to film a final segment of how to convert long data into wide data using Excel. So typically speaking, we see data in long format on like a daily basis but uh, the wide format is not as common. Unfortunately for us, that's actually what we need to do to get the racing bar graph to be able to work. So I downloaded this original data from uh, Flourish. So I've made that available to you all in the description. So make sure to check that out if you just wanna use this file directly. But uh, typically speaking, you would have it in the long format. So in order to convert long to wide in Excel, we can do just a couple of quick steps. Number one, you're gonna take your long data and you are going to highlight everything and then you will do insert and then do a table. So we need it to be a table so that when we leverage Power Query, it's gonna be able to manipulate it and do a couple things. So lucky for us, it's actually only like three or four steps and it's super fast to do this. But you'll go ahead and create the table. Now, if you just click anywhere in the table, the next thing you can do is go over to data and then you'll go over to get data. Now for me, the option that we need is under from other sources. 
And what we're trying to do is go over to the from table range. So we're in the table that we want and it's gonna be able to recognize it that way, no problem. So we're just gonna do for, from table range. So now that we're gonna see that Power Query Editor is popping up and now we only have to do two steps, which is super easy to do. Number one, we're gonna go ahead and click on transform. Now we're gonna go ahead and grab the year column. We are then going to click on pivot column. So that's what's going to make it actually go out across. So we'll click on pivot column. And then, uh, so the years are gonna go out across, but we need to tell it what value we want to go with it. And so that's going to be the population data in this case. So we'll click on this. Uh, so mine's kind of messing up, but it's, it's just down here. And we're just clicking on population. So if we go ahead and click OK, it will go ahead and convert the data in the way that we need it. So you'll notice that it actually got rid of all of the, the duplicates in terms of like lengthwise. So for example, there's just one Afghanistan, one Albania, one Algeria, and then uh, just a final confirmation, we can see that the years do in fact go over as intended. So whenever you finish that, you just have to go over to home and then click on close and load. So we'll just click on that. And then uh, it's just gonna put it here into a new table. So as far as Flourish is concerned, you can just uh, save this particular uh, tab in, into just a CSV file and then upload it directly and be able to use your own data. So that just about wraps up the video. I hope you learned a lot about the racing bar chart, found this to be helpful. And then of course, talking a little bit about the data conversions in order to create a really powerful visualization tool and definitely a ton of fun to be able to build. But anyways, if you did enjoy this video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.